Bengals at Ravens Thursday night football. We have another big AFC North battle on CBS this Sunday. Browns hosting the Steelers. Also have Ravens Dolphins in that early window. CJ Stroud and the Texans are on CBS as well, hosting the cards. No Europe games this week. We do have a, uh, a matchup between two of the hottest teams in the league on Sunday night, Vikings at Broncos. And there's that marquee game, the Super Bowl rematch on Monday night football. We are picking every game against the spread with Pete Prisco and Brady Quinn. Another winning week for Brady, and he's opened up a what? Four-game lead on Pete now after Pete had another losing week. Best bets for Pete. Terrible. Seven. But Brady, he had to phone in his picks last week. Danny Cannell filled in for him. Look at Danny's picks last week. Wow. <laughs> he went 3-12 and 12 against the spread. And, and you know what the rule is? If you don't phone in those picks, you have to go with Cannell's picks. So, Pete, if you ever miss a Wednesday, <laughs> you're at the mercy of Danny Cannell. A, I don't miss work. B, B, you should take Danny Cannell's picks, and then I'd be in the lead. You know, we, we were celebrating a Pison, his battle with cancer. He, he's good now, all good, but we do do an annual trip. That is so my apologies. That's great. I figured you think that's okay. Apparently that is not. okay. That's okay. He says he doesn't, he doesn't miss work, but he did try to get out of coming into the studio today because it's raining out. That's right. No. Because it's flooding out. <laughs> you have no idea. You live in a high rise. But this I got to drive not... through it. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. We lived in South Florida for how long? It's fine. Yeah. And you know what? The rest Until of us everybody else in. moved here, it never flooded like this. I can promise you that. Okay. So you're saying it's all the people? Just yeah. Like, oh Global warming, says Pete Prisco. No, it's Let's not. start with Thursday <laughs> night football. Bengals yeah. at Ravens. Baltimore laying three and a half at home. The Bengals, this is a wild stat. They've lost 14 straight primetime games on the road. That dates back to 2012. Well, and this is a tough place to play. Now, Cleveland in the second half was able to come back in Baltimore to get a great win. Deshaun Watson was perfect down the street. That's gutsy performance. But you also wonder, too, if Todd Monken doesn't have Lamar Jackson throwing the football with eight minutes left on a second and eight backed up, and they don't get the tip pick, how the rest of that game turns out? Because they were running the football effectively. Baltimore's running backs were averaging four yards a clip. That wasn't even including Lamar Jackson, which actually brought the average up. So I think Baltimore gets back to running the football. I, I, I know Baltimore's offensive line's battling some issues there. But they get back to running the football effectively. Lamar responds with a big game here. Remember, the, the Bengals, they're not going to have T. Higgins, probably without Trey Hendrickson as well. And as good as Burrow has been, I just I feel like maybe they're, they're going to have a tough time in this environment on a short week. I'll lay the three and a half points. I'm going to lay it as well. And we saw a Houston team that can't run the football, hadn't run the football all year, run the football last week against Cincinnati. I mean, they made Devin Singletary look like a star. That was the Lou Anarumo game. Yeah, right. It wasn't very good for Lou. And this one's not going to be very good for Lou either, particularly if Hendrickson is not there. So I do think, I'm in agreement with you, I think they run the ball here. Uh, they do put up some yards in the rushing game, and then Lamar will get some shots down the field. I don't know if Burrow will keep up against this Ravens defense. Ravens defense wasn't great last week. No. They'll be much better this time around. Trey Hendrickson is expected to play, according to a report. That's good for the Bengals, but the, yeah, the it schedule. Looked, it looked bad last week. But he, he's yeah. also, I, in the workout yesterday, it looked like he was a little, little limited. So we'll see how many plays he can play. The schedule is brutal for Cincinnati the rest of the way. They, every team they play is 500 or better. A win percentage combined 65% the rest of the way for Cincy. That's why Sportsline does not think the Bengals will make the postseason. Let's go to Sunday Night Football, a game a few weeks ago we didn't think would be intriguing at all. Now all of a sudden is two of the hottest teams in the league. Vikings have won five straight. Broncos have won three straight. Best story in football, Josh Dobbs, and the job that he's done, not only when he was in Arizona, given the short work, but also now with the Minnesota Vikings. And look, uh, some credit goes out to defensive coordinator Brian Flores. The job he's done with the Vikings defense, it's much improved. Dobbs is going to always steal kind of the, the thunder right now, especially considering they still don't have Justin Jefferson. He's not going to be back for this one, but they're finding ways of making plays. He's making plays, and defensively, they've been able to stay in games. So I'm going to take the two and a half points here and the Vikings on the road. I am a little bit concerned, though. The Broncos have run three straight, got a good one this past week, even though I, I guess if there's not 12 men on the field, Buffalo, 
Denver probably loses that game. And is Ken Dorsey still offensive coordinator in Buffalo? That's Good question. Good question. Uh, you know, we talked all offseason about how great an addition it was for Vic Fangio in Miami. He's the greatest coach. You know, he's going to change the defense. Brian Flores is the guy who's changed the defense. I'm with you. I, th I think he's the assistant coach of the year. That defense was dreadful last year, and they're much better this time around. I think that shows up. Look, Denver, Russell Wilson did some good things the other day, uh, but I think this is a bad spot for them. Back-to-back -back roadies on a short week, too. That's tough to do. I'll take Minnesota. What did you say yesterday, Pete, that if the Vikings had Kirk Cousins, they would go how far? They'd be a legitimate Super Bowl contender. Wow. And Josh Dobbs has done a pretty good job filling Yeah, I know, but the, this is game the three. Or at home at this one. This what? Is, this is not on the road for I know. Broncos. No, I said, what? It's in, uh, it's in Denver. Oh, I'm sorry. My yeah. bad. My sorry. bad. Hey, by the, way, by the way, Kirk Cousins in is, makes them a Super Bowl team. Contender. For sure. Yeah, the, the, the way he was playing when he the went The way out. he was playing. And for me to say that, that's high praise because, you know, I'm, I've criticized him before. The crazy thing about that is he's missed two games. He's still top ten in yards passing. That's what's crazy. Yeah. That, that's how and well no he was Justin playing. Jefferson. I mean, come on. This, this, this team would be dangerous if they were, if they were healthy. The yeah. flooding really got to you. You thought no, the Vikings I, I read it wrong. Man, My bad. It's gracious. Let's go to Monday Night Football. This is it right here, baby. This is the Super Bowl rematch. And it's the first time ever we've had a Super Bowl rematch, and both the teams are in first place in their respective conferences. Yeah, look, the Eagles have the best record in the league, uh, even though I, I think people still have some concerns how healthy is Jalen Hurts. He's been able to fight through so much this season. And, and defensively, they don't feel as dominant as they once did last year, even though you are seeing guys like Jalen Carter step up and look fantastic. Uh, this is one, though, where the Chiefs have their concerns of their own. The offense outside of, you know, really Travis Kelsey and Pacheco, who's willing to step up in this case? I, I think this one's going to be close. I'm on the opposite side of you here. I'm taking the two and a half points and the Eagles on the road. I, I am curious, though, is Taylor Swift going to be there? Because if she is, I feel like that maybe it's a bad pick in that case, given, given the track still, record of Taylor Swift going to Chiefs games. I think she's still on tour in I'm South America, she is. so I don't think she'll be I'm there. I'm hoping she is, um, for my pick. I'm with. I'm on the other side of you. I like the Chiefs here. I, I, yeah, Taylor Swift didn't factor in here at all for No, you? not for okay. me. Because uh, Travis Kelsey will catch 10 passes no matter if she's there or not. Actually, that's not true well, if you look there, at the I, stats. I'm just saying. This week he will. The okay. Eagles have had problems with the tight end, and and this is going to be another big game for him. I'm with you, though. There's concerns about their offense. They haven't got the ball down the field enough to the wide receivers. Eventually, it's going to come. And the Eagles' corners have been bad this year. Not having Maddox at nickel corner has hurt them, but Bradbury and Slay haven't played very well either. I think this is a game to get Mahomes going. Uh, you, had a, you had an opportunity for your catchphrase. You don't say it. What's that? Uh, you, name's not what? Names, not games. You love that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> you usually drop every one of your phrases every no, chance well, you I was, get. I might have been saving it for later yeah, on the in the show. The flooding, the flooding is really good. No, no, I wouldn't have said, I was saving it for later on in the show. Okay. Brady, you said you like the over in this game, right? I do. I think this will be a higher scoring I would game agree with that. Well, I would agree with that. That's the, probably my favorite bet in this game. Interesting. Okay, because the numbers this season would, would go the other way. Look at the Monday night unders, 11 and 1 wow. so far this season. I know. It's, and I think, I, I think on Monday night when we do the show, I've picked the over in about 12 of those games. And look, unders have hit more often than not in every single game this season, aside from Monday night football. I, I think you're going to see more scoring in this particular matchup, though. I Love agree. averages. I agree. Out. I agree. All right. They agree on the Ravens minus three and a half at home against the Bengals. The Vikings plus two and a half on the road in Denver, Pete. Yeah. And a disagreement there in the Wait, Super that, Bowl. That's a rematch. Sunday game. It's Sunday night football. <laughs> <laughs> HQ presented by Penske. No overseas games this week. Here's a look at the CBS games in the early window. One o'clock Eastern time. We've got C.J. Stroud there. What, Pete? CBS. Oh, yes, yeah. You want me to do the yeah. whistling? C yeah. CBS. <laughs> That's it. Here we go. Dolphins at home against the Raiders. <laughs> Steelers and Browns. Another good AFC North showdown. And, oh, my. Let's see what the Jags have for the Titans after getting embarrassed. That's, that's the game we're going to start with, picking them with uh, Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco. Pete, you told us yesterday you no longer have the Jags winning the AFC. Well, no, I said whoever wins You're next week. Whoever wins Pete? next week in Houston will be the winner of the division, period. End of story. Well, you said yesterday no, you, I did the not. Jags are, are not going flopping? to the Super Bowl. I'm not, uh, they're not, oh, they're not, I didn't say they weren't going to win the division. I said I know, I'm talking about the Super Bowl. Oh, they're not going to the Super Bowl. Okay. Yeah, they're, you picked them before the season. Yeah, I did. Uh, I don't like my pick any more than he likes his Bengals pick right now. I'm still sticking with the Bengals, though. <laughs>
like Pete, <laughs> who called multiple Super Bowls in 10 years when Joe Burrow was drafted. I'm still sticking with you until the nails in the coffin. I'm not year. sticking with Jacksonville as a Super Bowl team until they change their offense. Their offense is way too predictable. It's too horizontal. Even Doug Peterson admitted today they got to take vertical shots. Well, call them. That would be a nice thing to do. Everybody plays them in a phone booth until they stop playing like that. They're not going to be a Super Bowl team, but they are good enough to beat the Tennessee Titans. The Titans are just getting their quarterback brutalized. Will Levis, 37 and a half times he's been hit, he's been hit a lot. In, in his starts. You can't continue to do that to him. I think Jacksonville gets back on track here. My only concern with laying this number is this. Is? It's a sandwich game. They play the Texans next week, okay. but the Texans game won't mean nearly as much if they don't win this Haven't, game. So they'll win hasn't this game. Derek Henry had a nice history? Too, right? Oh yeah, and the history of the Titans in this, <laughs> the history of the Titans in this series is, exactly. is pretty darn good too. So that's why I looked at this number. I was like, that is way too big of a number, and, and maybe they're expecting Jacksonville to respond after the beating they took versus San Francisco last week. But I, I, I'm looking at the matchup. Come on, I've seen this story way too many times. This is like a Mike Vrabel special. All right, they're gonna run Derrick Henry and run Derrick Henry, and I know it looked bad last week. Although I think you'd admit. Tampa Bay's good against the run. That front seven Tampa, can get Jacksonville's after. actually pretty good against the run. Yeah, but they've also been able to make a lot of hay off turnovers. And, and if yeah. Will Levis can take care of the football and if they can protect him enough, I think Tennessee could keep this one within the number. I think the six and a half, the hook, is going to get you in this one. I'm taking you the six love and a half the, You love it. When the hook gets me, he, he sends me a text. Oh, hook, every time. Hook. Every hey, time. Back to back. To back roadies oh, for the Titans. A That's a brutal thing to handle, man. It, is. it really is. And like I said, they don't have to win. They just have to cover okay. the six and a half. And the, and the hook is going to matter. The hook will okay. definitely matter. Tennessee's lost nine straight games away from home. Uh, another one o'clock game on CBS Sunday. Cardinals at Texans. The C.J. Stroud tour continues. Maybe even more of a ramp up to that MVP talk that some have mentioned. Yeah, and you start to see the running game get a little bit going last week, too, for the Texans. So maybe they'll provide them some more balance. So some more help. We'll see what the injury situation looks like if they get Nico Collins back. Uh, bottom line is, though, C.J. Stroud is playing. He's already won the Offensive Rookie of the Year. He's making a strong case for MVP at this point, especially if he keeps carrying this team as much as he's been asked to throw the football. So I like where the Texans are going. I love what D'Amico Ryans has done. I think right now, to me, he's up there for Coach of the Year, probably with Kevin O'Connell, given the success of both coaches and everything they've dealt with. So I'm going to lay the four and a half points. I'm going to keep riding the Texans here. But the under, I think this will be a lower scoring game than this particular number two. I like that play. I'm going to take the points. And I think Kyler Murray, we said this on Sunday, what is he going to look like? He looked like Kyler he looked Murray. Good. He looked really Making good. Plays. He wasn't afraid to run. He didn't look like he was slower. It looked like the same Kyler Murray. And that Cardinals defense plays tough, feisty football. I think they'll make it tough on, uh, on C.J. Stroud. They'll keep it within the number. And the Texans are going to be peeking ahead a little bit to next week when they have that big division game it's with the Jacksonville. NFL, man. You don't They're peek peeking ahead. ahead. You don't peek ahead in the NFL. When, when the Cardinals win the game outright, you'll think you're they, talking about that Texans Jags game like it's Chiefs Eagles, oh like it's a it's Super a big, Bowl rematch. The, I'm telling you, the winner of that game wins the division. This isn't period. college football. You're not peeking ahead. You don't have some directional school you're playing before a big one. They peek it's ahead. It's the NFL. You learn the game, Pete. Learn they the peek game. ahead. They peek ahead. Put on the videotape. Watch the videotape. Yeah. Uh, peek ahead. <laughs> I've never been in a locker room, but I know they peek ahead. You've That's been in a lot of locker rooms. <laughs> Trust me. Well, you say it every week. <laughs> you haven't sounded the QB defender alarm yet. Maybe that's Well, he coming. hasn't defended anybody Raiders yet. at Dolphins, also 1 o'clock Eastern on CBS. This is uh, a Raiders team that's 2-0 and with Antonio Pierce as the interim head coach and a Dolphins team that uh, against teams like this at home, they usually blow out. So the line is big. Yeah, and they're coming off the bye, and, and I think they're they're looking, if you look at the AFC East right now, that door is wide open for them to be able to make a run win this thing. Obviously, the Jets kind of falling off. The Bills are fired their offense coordinator. Who knows what that offense is going to look like with Joe Brady, if we better or worse. And the Patriots, are obviously, are, are a disaster right now. So this is that open door for them. But the line's big, 11 and a half. I don't feel great about this one. I actually like the over in this game probably better than anything else. But I'll lay the 11 and a half points here. I do think the Dolphins, with extra time to prepare, Devon H should be back for this one too. I think that gives them a bit of a boost too in the backfield. And, and I do wonder for the Raiders, it's been great so far with what Antonio Pierce has done, but offensively they're going to have to put up a lot of points to, com to, to compete and combat with what the Dolphins can do. Yeah, normally I wouldn't like laying this 11 and a half, but the history of Miami being at home this year, they've been really good at home. The offense is more explosive at home. And coming off that Chiefs game, they did not play well offensively in that game. I think they get back on track here. Aiden O'Connell is going to have a rookie game. It might happen here. Vic Fangio throw a bunch of stuff at him. I'll take the Dolphins minus the points. I hate laying big numbers, but I'm going to lay that number as well. O'Connell with the longest winning streak 
for a Raiders rookie in history. Two games. They've never had a longer winning streak than that from a rookie quarterback. All right, let's move to another 1 o'clock Eastern game. This is not a CBS game, though. Chargers at Packers. Chargers, I, look, are you, you going to go to them again, Pete? Oh, no, no, Chargers. I, no, he's going to get the Packers involved. He's going to take I, the Packers. I, yeah, he's already jumped off the Packers bandwagon. No, he has. He's yeah, probably taking them here. I've jumped off the Packers bandwagon. They're not making the postseason or anything, but I'm on the bandwagon here oh, in large part because I think this game's going to be high scoring. Really, in fact, I really like the over in this yeah, game. I like the over too. Jordan Love was good last week. He played really good football. He looked like a different quarterback. That carries over. We know the Chargers can't stop anybody. They got a defensive coach, right? Oh, one of the best defensive minds in the league. His defense is awful. And they have pass rushers. They still can't rush the passer. This is not a good defense. I think Jordan Love plays well, but I still think Justin Herbert will get his on the other side. It's a very high-scoring game. I think the Chargers win it, but barely. I do like the over. I'm with Pete on that and that sentiment. Uh, neither of these teams really have, can stop the run. I think this will actually be a game, too, where you see the running, running backs go off for both teams. Um, Higher-scoring affair, I like that better than anything else. The Chargers, it makes it tough to feel like you can trust them in this spot, but I'll lay the three points. I just, I think they've got the better roster. I think they've got the better quarterback, and I think that's going to translate to them winning this game. By the way, the Chargers have actually been better against the run this year. They've Much been better. better than they have in years past. Yeah. But I mean, these two, are it, these two are traditionally not... awful against the run. You're right. Yeah. All right, another 1 o'clock game. Bears at Lions. Detroit with the best against the spread mark this season, 7-2. and two. They just beat the Chargers. Yeah, and, and if you're looking at the Lions, it feels like they've got everything working in their favor. Justin Fields should be back for the Bears in this one. Curious to see how the time away impacts him potentially within this offense, but I just think the Lions are a good enough team to be able to cover this number in a divisional matchup. Usually I hate laying a big number like this, but uh, they're destined to be competing potentially to win the NFC and go to the Super Bowl. So I, I love laying the 9.5. I also think that this game hits the over of 46.5 here. Yeah, I like the Lions as well. I, I like what they've done offensively. They're so creative. Ben Johnson's going to be a head coach. Uh, Jared Goff should be mentioned in the MVP conversation as well. He's had a heck of a year, and this is a good team. I worry about the defense a little bit, but you probably know this better than I do. When you have thumb injuries, uh, you come back off of those injuries. What's it like coming back that first game back throwing the football? Ball security is an issue. That's the biggest thing is how you grip it, how it feels coming off your fingertips. And, and in this time of year when it's cold, it makes it a little bit more difficult to feel that. But, but I do worry Justin Fields, if he gets hit, Aiden Hutchinson, someone kind of wraps him, how does he fall? How does he protect that football? if that impacts the thumb that's the biggest concern is ball security over everything everything else and then I would say accuracy but in this case you're indoors you're at Detroit it'd be one thing once it gets back home to Chicago with that right. win this time of year that's a different story how the ball's you know spinning coming off your fingers Lions score a bunch in this game All right, Bears six straight losses in the division against the spread Lions 11 straight wins in the division against the spread Steelers and Browns this is a low total 34 and a half Deshaun Watson out for the season and it sounds like Dorian Thompson Robinson is going to be taking over yeah and we'll see if he can improve upon his, his first start obviously turn the football over too much and it's like this Browns team can be a playoff team. And despite the fact that Deshaun Watson's not there, their defense is good enough. They can run the football good enough. I, I think Kevin Stefanski is a good coach. So as long as they can manage everything offensively from the quarterback spot, whether it's DTR moving forward or, or P.J. Walker, I think they got a shot at making the playoffs. So uh, all that being said, I'm still going with the Steelers. I mean, Mike Tomlin, the job he's done with this team, I'll take the two and a half points. Uh, I hate picking against my Brownies, but in this case, there's a little bit too much unknown for how Cleveland's going to respond to the news of Watson being out. Before Watson's news, did you have the Cleveland in this I game? I did. You did? I did. I mean, it's not like he was playing like Brian Sipe in his he heyday the, or Otto Graham or anything. He had the best half. <laughs> had, he had the best half he's had as a Brown. I get half. it. I get it. But again, he hasn't been great this season. Their passing game hasn't been great this season. It was great in the second half. I want to know, week. the big question is, why are they going to DTR if they are? Because he I was, think you know what you have in P.J. Walker. you got to figure out what you have in DTR. So this is more for the future then. Than well, if you go back to the preseason, DTR played phenomenal. It's one of the reasons why they moved on from Josh Dobbs, which I do wonder if Cleveland is regretting that decision. I'm sure they are. Seeing, obviously, I'm how sure well Dobbs played I'm sure they are. And even Arizona. But, again, I look to the other side. It, it isn't like Pickett's been Terry Bradshaw or Ben Roethlisberger either. Well, I, I'll put it this way. I wasn't even on an NFL, you know, near an NFL stadium. I was on a college campus that people still have fire Matt Canada signs in the state of Pennsylvania. So It's, it's amazing. Trust me. I mean, it's there's, amazing. There's a lot of pressure. I'm going to take, take Cleveland's defense and run game because the Steelers have had problems with the run of times too this year. I'm going to take Cleveland's defense and run game to win this and cover the number. Wow. And again, the So to win, you're saying money line. Win it. Wow. wow. Okay. DTR, fifth round pick out of UCLA. Yeah, like they're, they're going to get that start. Uh, let's move to the Cowboys 
at the hapless Panthers, who are going to try to help get the Bears that number one overall pick. CeeDee Lambs has been incredible for Dallas of late. First player in NFL history with 10 receptions and 150 receiving yards in three straight games. Does he do it again? Uh, I think he can, too, versus this defense. And, and that's one of the things that if you look at the Carolina Panthers and their struggles, everyone's going to put on, you know, Bryce Young and the offense. The defense hasn't been as good as it was initially under Matt Rule, even Steve Wilkes as they finished the season. They're not running the football as well. Uh, all those things have played a factor, obviously, on Bryce Young and his development or lack thereof and what this team's looked like. You look, the Cowboys, to me, are one of the best teams in football right now. You mentioned CeeDee Lamb. Somebody needs to mention Dak Prescott. He's playing really well, too. This is one of those games where, look, if you have questions about Dallas and kind of who they could beat in the bigger games, well, you don't in this one because uh, this Panthers team is devoid of being able to create big plays. Dallas can create big plays. Dak's playing phenomenal. I'm laying the 10.5 points uh, with the Cowboys on the road. I think this is ugly. Uh, I think Bryce Young in that offense is The offensive awful. line's going to struggle versus that. The, and Bryce Young is struggling. He's not playing very well, and let's stop making all excuses for him. He's five foot eleven and he can't see over the line of scrimmage. He's having real problems throwing the football. He's going to turn it over a couple times here. And <laughs> let's give Dak Prescott his due. Because, like you mentioned, no, few people are giving him the due he deserves. He takes all the heat in the world when he plays poorly. He's playing really well. I'll take the Cowboys. Blowout city. Yep. Okay, let's move on to another NFL. NFC East matchup. Giants at Commanders. Washington laying nine and a half. Slinging Sammy Howell leading the NFL in pass yards. Yeah, and he could sling it. And, and this is a match versus the Giants defense. That struggle we saw last week, the blowout versus the Cowboys. This is one of those bets where the number's big for a divisional game. And I think eventually Tommy DeVito and Brian Dable, they'll put together something to allow them to be competitive. I, I've got to see it first, though. So I'm laying the nine and a half. It's one of those, I'm laying the nine and a half because I'll feel worse, I'll feel worse if I took the nine and a half from the Giants if they ended up not covering that number. Yeah, again, we've talked about big numbers in division games. So I'm laying it anyways. I just... I, I, Sam Howell has been playing really, really good football. And I think he is the answer to their quarterback situation. I think he's showing people that. He makes plays on the run. He's, he's accurate on the run. I think that's a good thing when your offensive line isn't very good. So I'll take the commanders as well. And by the way, they're still in the thick of the playoff race if they win this game. Yep. That's the early slate on Sunday. We do have uh, several teams on buys, Saints, Falcons, Colts, Patriots this week. Early Edge podcast hosted by Pete. Coach. Coach. Jonathan Coachman. Scan the QR code. It's your daily sports line betting podcast. Week 11 NFL picks presented by Penske. Late Sunday games. Late Sunday afternoon. 405 Eastern. Only one game in that window. It's 49ers Bucks. We have two games late window on CBS. Rams hosting the Seahawks and the Bills hosting the Jets. And that is where we're going to start with Buffalo laying six and a half. I think most people will say, geez, this, this has to be the game. The schedule really heats up for the Bills. This has to be the game. Pete, tell us why the Jets are, are maybe the last team Josh Allen wants to face. Well, they're not going to win the game, the Jets, because they're so limited offensively. Even though Zach Wilson's done some better things for him. I mean, you got to always put the qualifier on. For him, he's played well. <laughs> I'm not defending him. Me back back defender I'm not defending Real. him. For him. That's not, that's not a compliment, believe me. Uh, I think Josh Allen has problems with this Jets defense. You've seen it over the years. A lot you of quarterbacks do, yeah. You've, you saw it in week one. I think this is going to be a tough, tough go for him again. But they're going to be uh, do enough defensively to find a way to win the game. They win it. They just don't cover that big number. I've got the Bills covering this number. I'll, I'll be quick. I just think there's going to be some sort of response to Joe Brady taking over. And I think they're going to open some things up maybe. Maybe put a little more up-tempo like you wanted to do. Well, if they do, can I change my pick? No, you no? can't. You made no? your pick. You have to live with it now. The Jets on the other side, I think there's growing frustration. The fact that they talk about making changes, but they're not making changes to the play call, they're not making changes to the quarterback, and everyone seems to squarely put everything on those two with the lack of production on offense. So I think it's becoming an issue, and until Aaron Rodgers comes back, there's really nothing saving this team. So I'm going to lay the six and a half points. If you don't get that game in the late window on CBS, you'll get this following one. Seahawks at Rams, almost a pick him here. Rams just pounded the Seahawks in week one in Seattle. I like the over the best of this game. I think they'll be both teams scoring a lot of points here.
uh, especially with Matt Stafford coming back now off the what, thumb injury he was dealing with. So uh, I'm going to lay the one point here with the Seahawks divisional game. It should be close, but it does seem a bit odd between these two and, and the records, at least if you're looking at the Seahawks uh, and what they've done so far this year. So I don't feel great about it, but I'll lay the point. Yeah, I'm on the other side. I like the Rams. I, I just think this, this rivalry and it, traditionally they play close games. No matter if one team is better than the other, they've always played close games. I, I think the Rams will respond coming off their bye and play well here. I'll, I'll take the Rams win the game outright. Okay, let's go to 405 Eastern time. It's the 49ers home against the struggling Bucks. It's a 10 and a half point spread. Brock Purdy is back. Brock Purdy's back and the 49ers look like they are back. Mm -hmm. And I'm really concerned about this because this was the one game we had a big number at 10 and a half. And I'm taking the 10 and a half points and the Bucks here. And, and maybe it's a little bit of the fact that I think that front seven should be able to stop the run and then we'll see if Baker and the offense can put them enough points to be able to make some plays on the outside against San Francisco. Uh, so I'm taking the 10 and a half points here. 49ers win, but Bucks keep within the number. Yeah, this is a big number. I'm still going to lay it. I think the 49ers got all their guys back, and they're a different team. I mean, they looked dominant last week. I think that's going to carry over. Uh, they, you know, being this is a long trip for Tampa Bay. I think this is going to be an ugly trip for them. I think that 49ers win and cover that number. Okay. Bucks did snap that losing skid last week against the Titans. So, uh, no agreement there in any of those three games. No, no, no. Agree on, on any of the late games. I Let's need go. to make up ground. Let's go with your best bets. Pete, one of your best bets is from one of those games, right? Yeah, I took the Rams. I, I just think this is a great spot for Sean McVay. Uh, he's he, uh, coming off the bye. He gets his quarterback back. Those young players are playing well. The Seattle defense hasn't been great at times. Uh, and, you know, Geno Smith hasn't been great at times uh, well, on the road. So I think this is a great chance for the Rams. Aaron Donald, game wrecker, will create a couple turnovers that lead to points. I'm with you. I do worry about the offensive line versus Donald. Uh, but I also worry about the Rams offensive line versus that Seattle Seahawks run as is coming off. Well, you, you actually like this pick that I'm taking as best bet. Bears, Lions over 46 and a half. There's going to be a lot of scoring in this game. Remember, it's in Detroit. Weather's not a factor. Wind's not a factor. None of that. We know the Lions put up a bunch of points, especially at home, and then versus that Bears defense. But I also think Justin Fields will have some success, too, in his return uh, to the Bears offense. So I like I love it. The I, I like it. I hate when I like your best bet because last week I liked your best bet. Yours came you in. Like mine it. was you love And it. mine was rotten. Well, most of yours have been rotten this season. Yeah. Well, we I've, seven been on best I've been victimized in some of those. They were good picks. They were just bad Can situations. Can we get Janelle to send in his picks for this week? By again? the way, I heard he was uh, making fun of me on the radio about my picks. Somebody oh. told me. My sources told Brady? me. Yeah, no, I didn't say I was making fun of you. You were saying I that I, I, with picks. the way I make my ex excuses when I have a pick. You lost the bet, but you always say I was on the right side. I was on the right yes, side. I did call you out for that. Yeah, yeah, I was on the right side of the Cowboys game well, against but, the Eagles. But I compared you to my co-host because he also says that, and he loses he's a all smart, the time. He's a smart man. He loses all the time. Good luck to everyone in week 11.